Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to be answering the question on June 2019, ICT June 2019. So the question is as follows. This tax is based on the online purchase workbook found in your candidate folder. Open the online purchase workbook found in your candidate folder. So that's the first question. So your candidate folder will always be given to you. It will always be on the desktop, always be given to you. So here is it, open it. And inside it, open a spreadsheet. Yes. And inside a spreadsheet, what? We have four tabs. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's go to the next question. One, copy the names of the customer sheet to the name field in the general sheet. So here they say we should come to the customer sheet. Here is it. We we'll copy the names. To copy the names, what do we do? We we'll first select it. We we'll select the names. And we we'll use a shortcut, Control c to copy. So I've copied, and they say we should paste it in what? In the, in the general sheet under name field yeah in this case our general sheet is what our broadcast so we'll come there under the name field we we'll also select and to we'll paste to paste is control v so that's for the first question two marks the second merge the two cells b22 and c22 containing the word total so the social merge cells b22 and C22. So what do we do? We select it. To select, you press shift and you drag. So I selected the two cells. So to merge it. To merge, after selecting, we come to the home menu. On the home menu, under wrap text, we'll see merge center. I will click on it. It will automatically merge the cells. So I've we'll merged the cells. The next three. Format row 22 so that so that row height is 35 pixels and font size is 22 and bold. So the social format will draw 22 so that the height should be 35 pixels. So let's come then. Row 22, yes, I row 22. The social format it so that the height to be, the height to be 35 pixels. So this is it. I come where I see this plus and this way I can change the height. So they say 35 pixels. I scroll down until I reach 35. So this 35 pixel, and now then they say font size is 22 and bold. So they say we should give the fit a font size to be 22. So I select the whole row. I to font size this is it here. I take 22 and they say bold. And they say we should put it in bold. Okay. The next question. Insert borders to the all the cells in the range A1 to E1. So the action is insert borders in the, all the cells from A1 to E1. So here what we're looking at here is we have um this is from A1 to A1 to E22 pardon. Insert borders from in all the cells from A1 this A1 to E22 yes E22 yeah we insert borders so to insert borders we first select after selecting, we we'll come down the font size and we we'll click on this and we we'll select all borders. I will take what all borders. So I've inserted borders in all the cells. The next, use a light gray color to fill the header A1 to E1. So you should fill this header A1 to E1. So the first thing we select, and then we we'll come to what we we'll come to color fill color. And they say a light gray. So this is light gray. You feel it. Yes, we go to the next. Question six. Insert a formula in cell E2 that computes the total price by multiplying the quantity by the unit price. For each item which is found in the item sheet, use the hinge, the hint below to complete the formula. So here they say if what is in cell C2? Is equals to T1, then the, the, the total, the total price will be what? What is in D2, which is the quantity times its item, times what? Its item, which is in C2. So here we'll put item here, item with question mark here, because it is not on the same spreadsheet that we're working on. The spreadsheet that we're working on is broadcast. So now if we want to use another element in another spreadsheet, we have to make reference to the name of the spreadsheet. And at the end, we'll put question mark. Then we we'll put C2M. 
we put this um, dollar sign in between P and two because we don't want it to change. We want that when we drag it down, it should remain the same. So let's come to our spreadsheet and write it. So here they say the total price will be equal to what the quantity times the unit price. So here's our quantity. So we we'll start writing our so we say we we'll put we'll start writing our formula we'll start with equals. To. So you say we should put equals to now. Say if what if what is found in cell C two is equals to is equals to T one. If it's equals to T one, what should you do? You should take what. You should calculate now the total price, which will be what the quantity times times what the unit price, and the unit price is found in which cell? It's found in a cell in the items. So that's why we we'll make reference to the item, the item spreadsheet. So we say item. Now we'll put what equation mark, and if it's for T1, if you um, what is in C2 is T1. What is what is the unit price for T1? The unit price for C1 is what C2. So there we need to put the word C2. So C2. So as we say, we don't want it to change to put dollar in between C2. That will be the total. But now it is it is not if what is in C2 is not um C1, what do we do? We continue using what an if statement. So here we are using what a nested if means that if this condition is not true, it doesn't do this, it goes to the next if and check. If it's not true, it goes to the next if and check until the condition is what true. We put it execute this true value, the value which is true. So we put again another if put comma. If if what if what is found in cell C two. Let me just copy this. You should not write too much. If what is found in cell C two now is equals to what is it equals to T two. It's equal to T2. What should we do? If it's equal to T2, we'll take what the we'll take the unit price, which is CD, the quantity which is D2, times what the unit price, which is now in inserted in cell C3. Or if it's not that, if that's not the case, we we'll go to the next if, if what is found in cell C2 is equal to what C3. What do we do? You will take what the unit price, the quantity D2 times what the unit price, which is found in C C4. But if that's not the case, we we'll go to the next. If if what is found in cell C2 is equal to what C4. If it's equal to C4, we we'll take the quantity times what is found in cell C5. Because here we can see that for C4. Its unit price. Okay, let's. We need to first compute the formula. I can't show you guys now. Let's first compute the formula. So that's um C. C five. C dollar five. Okay, then we lock our braces because that's just all we have from. C. Okay, we also have T five. So continue. Comma. If what is um if, if what is in cell C two if what is in cell C two is equals to C five what do we do if it's equals to C five what do we do we we'll say the total price will be what Z two star the unit price which is found in the in the item spreadsheet that's what we call we call reference to the item. We call the reference of the item. Item. Now we'll put question mark and we'll put the cell, which is cell C. Now we'll put dollar. C what? C dollar. C dollar six. And yeah, I forgot to lock my quotes. I'm putting it in quotes because it's a character. So then we we'll lock our bracket. Good. And we'll press enter. To calculate. So let 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 us explain the formula again once more. So yeah, our formula says um, we will first check the if statement. It has two conditions. If it, if if this condition is true, it executes what is here and stops. But if it's not true, it goes to the next instruction. So what do we do? What do we do here? It checks what is in C two. What is in C two on our table here is what it is two. So it is two. What does it do? 
um, what, is, what is in C2 here is C2. So it is not C1. So it doesn't execute yet. It comes now here. It checks. What is what is in C2? Is it equal to C2? Yes. What will it do? It will take what the quantity, which is D2, 71, times what? We'll go now to the item spreadsheet and insert C in C3. That's the unit price of what? C2. So here you can see well clearly. Then it's a C3. We have the unit price of what? C2. It multiplies with it. And when it multiplies, it gives us what? The total. But if that was not the case, like here, yeah. if that was not the case, like um, in this other, in this case, okay, so here we can just drag here to have the formula for everything. We just drag, yes. So if that, if that was not the case, of, if the case we had to go right to the last element, what will we do? So let's follow it. So it checks. Is what is what is in C3? Here's our C3. Is it equals to T1? No. So it doesn't execute this. It goes to the next instruction. It checks what is in C3. Is it equals to what is in is it equals to T2? Is it T2? No. It don't execute this instruction. It goes to the next instruction. It checks what is in C3. Is it equals to T3? No. It doesn't execute this instruction. It goes to the next instruction. What is in C3 is equal to C4? No. It, it doesn't execute this instruction. It goes to the next instruction. What is in C3 is equal to C5? Yes. And if it's equal to C5, what should you do? It takes the quantity, which is in D3, times its item, the, the unit item, which is in what? C6. If I come to the table of item for T5, T5, I'll say it is unit price. Its unit price is found in what? C6. Okay. Let's now explain why we're putting these dollars. I'm putting these dollars. Because when you drag it, if you don't put the dollars, when you drag it, the cell reference changes. You either go to C7, 8. So we put it like that, it should remain fixed. Yes. So that's it. We we'll move on to the next question. So here they say write down the formula in cell E2 in the line below. So we just come to our spreadsheet. E2. These are E2. We we'll click on E2. So this is E2. This is the formula here. Or simply you can copy it in the formula bar. Here's our formula by and here verify always that your name box is what E2. So this is the formula here, copy it on your formula booklet. And I guess that was four max, four and max. Seven, calculate the total along row 22 in D and E. So yeah, okay, you want us to calculate the total in what along row 22 in what cell D and cell E. So yeah, the total here is just what the total of all the quantity. So there are many methods. The first method we're gonna be summing them one by one. That D2 plus D3 plus D4 up to D21. But it's the time complexity is so high. This another method. The other method is using the sum function. We say sum from what? Sum from D2 up to what? D3. Another method, if I don't have time to type, I use what they call what? The auto sum. I just put my cursor in the box and I come and take what? Auto sum. I click on auto sum. It gives me the formula. That's what the sum from D2 up to D21. And I press enter. It gives me the answer. I do the same thing for E. I just use my auto sum. It gives me the sum of everything. And I press enter. Okay, let's move to the next question. Set the title. Um, okay, we skip, sorry. Yeah, they say write down the formula in cell E22 in the line below. So which formula do we use in E22? You can just come and click here and you see the formula. So it is equal to what you always verify that your name box is what they get in the equation. That's E22. It is equal to what? Always start your formula with equals to. If you don't put equals to in your candidate folder, you mark it wrong. So you say it is equals to what? Sum from what? E2 to what? E21. You write that on your candidate folder. So question 8. Insert the vertical chart bar of item code against the quantity. So now here in this question, they want us to what? To do what? They want us to draw, draw, want us to draw a, a, a quantity versus total price word bar chart. So what do we do? To do that, oh, sorry, that's an error. They said, um, insert a vertical bar chart of items. So it's the item code against what the quantity. So I'm drawing a bar, a bar chart of the item code against the quantity. So to do that, we we'll select, we we'll select it, we we'll select the two of them. When you select, make sure on the home menu, on the home menu, um, you go pardon, you go back to insert, on the insert menu, you see here the bar chart. They say it is how vertical. If it was if it was horizontal, we use this one. So it's vertical. So you can choose your your own form. So we we'll choose this. Now the question continues. 
They say set the title of the chat to others. Means that this is our title here. They say we should change this and put what others. So why what we have here and write all those. Good. Enter. Um good. Okay, go to the next. Name the horizontal axis as item and vertical axis as quantity. So here the one also name the horizontal axis and the vertical axis. So to do that, we we'll just come here at chart element. We click on it and we say what one what do we want? One the axis. So axis, which axis for the horizontal we click and we say for the horizontal we should put what items. We'll put item. And we'll do the same thing for the vertical. We'll come and click on add chart element. we we'll take axis title and take word for vertical. And they say for vertical, what should we put? For vertical, we should put what? They say we should put quantity. Why what is inside here? And we'll put quantity. Okay, good. we we'll continue. They say move the bar chart to an area just below the table so that it prints on the same page as the table. So, okay, and so we should move the position of this. Before we print it, we can disturb our table. So, we just drag it down, 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 and okay, we leave it here. Boom. So, we'll put it here. Okay. So, that's it. Now, we need to verify that it could print our work if it, should, if it comes out or not. If it doesn't come out, we modify. So, we'll try to print our work. That's why we are using control word P for the shortcut. So, yes, now if I, I we try to print our work, it's only the bar chart that comes out. Why does it happen? Because I'm, I've just selected the bar chart. So, let's let's click somewhere else and now try to print our work again. So, yeah, we are seeing that this is how it shows. And the bar chart is cut halfway. So, we we'll need to carry the bar chart and put down here, down here. Yeah. So, we'll go back to our spreadsheet. We'll carry the uh, bar, uh, bar chart. To carry, I just click on it and drag, carry and put down it. Good. Now let's try to print and see. Control P. So now yeah, I see that each of them come out on the same sheet as we said. Okay, we move on to the next. Now save the workbook and print the broadcast sheet only. So you should save this workbook and print only the broadcast sheet. So to save, we just press Control S since the file has already been created and and saved in the candidate folder. So just press Control S the short the shortcut and to print we use Control P if our computer is connected to what the printer. But if not, it, the if not our examiner will come with the USB key and collect our project and print it out for us. Yeah, thank you. Please help me like, subscribe, share, and comment this video. And if you have any worries, any part that you never understand, please just you can go to the comment part and and you comment there. And if you want if you want us to answer any other year, you can also comment on the comment box section. Yeah, thank you.